Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 28, Part 6 The Difficulties in Becoming a Night Guard Candace was abuzz with excitement and curiosity. A new future was before her. She had spent 22 years doing the same thing, being restricted by her superiors, disregarded and insulted behind her back. Going from that to the seemingly much more accepting night guard felt like it would be an exhilarating change of pace. It certainly had been so far. Her dreams of Luna and Twilight crossed her mind, joining the memory of the reality of being pinned under the larger mare as her neck was being nibbled with fangs. So many possibilities, both professional and not so professional. Solar guards opened the doors. The pair of them seemed to glare at her from under the anonymity of their armor's enchantments. Leaving the castle, she stepped out into the sun. The air felt a little colder, though sunlight warming her a little less. Inside her chest, there was the feeling that something was missing. Something that she never knew she had was gone forever. Candace let her thoughts wander about what she was feeling for a minute. That's an awfully subtle form of manipulation. Candace noted, her first data point about Celestia's manipulations being revealed. I wonder if I would have been able to even have that moment of doubt before the oath was removed. That's enough to ask Elena about the manipulations. Candace looked at her ID, that security magic starting to bold red letters revoked, with a small version of Celestia's mark as the authority. This sort of thing only happens before a pony was sentenced for treason. It was odd knowing that she was only the second pony in recorded history that had been released from the Solar Oath. She was unsure how to feel about all this attention this would bring her. Maybe she'd ask Shining Armor about that. She made her way from the main castle to the RGIS offices. Two guards blocked her path. Both of their identities were concealed. One a unicorn mare, the second a pegasus stallion. Hey guys, I'm transferring over to Night Guard. I've been released from my oath. I have orders to facilitate my transfer of duties, and I need to turn in my equipment. Candace started while pointing to her saddlebags. Being stopped by the security she had walked by without issue for all those years felt odd, but was not unexpected. She could see the look of betrayal on the face of one of them. You are not authorized to be here! Leave! The other spoke in a fierce, unyielding tone. She then reached out to take the saddlebags from her with her aura. Her null field then disrupted her aura. I need to get a visitor's badge. The counter to do that is just inside. Are you seriously going to obstruct me from going to a publicly accessible section of the building? She said in annoyance before glancing at her saddlebags. That has personal property and classified documents that you don't have the security clearance to even look at. Try that again, and I will arrest you for theft of RGIS property. She promised. The Pegasus Guard interjected in a calm tone of voice. Sorry, Candace. You no longer have the authority to do that. You are currently just a... civilian. A civilian that still has the right to go to that counter over there. Candace stated, pointing her hoof at the clearly visible visitor's queue. Additionally, until I turn in my ID card to the CEO, actually, I do have the authority. Check Regulation 23.5 Paragraph F. The guard cut her off. That's a loophole and you know it. Nobody will listen to a traitor's abomination like you, so you have no business being here. Now hoof over the official stuff and leave. I'll grant you that's a loophole, but it's still a valid part of the Solar Guard regulations. Also, as per the regs, I can't hand you classified documents that you lack the security clearance for. If you look at my ID, you will see my security clearance is still perfectly valid. Now let me get in to get my visitor's badge and let me do my job. Candace said with growing frustration. You know, it's a travesty that you were allowed in the guard at all, let alone Candelot. The world would be a better place if you died at birth, like your kind is meant to. The second guard gasped, taking half a step back. He clearly had not expected anything so vulgar. Paper Pusher approached from behind, heading towards the entrance, waiting patiently behind Candace as if in a queue. He used his magic to write a few things down on a piece of paper. Once done, he handed the new official orders to the mayor. Report to room 324 and await further instructions, Paper Pusher said calmly. The mayor glared at 2nd Lieutenant Pusher for a long moment before aggressively saluting and turning, stomping off. Compared to a slightly ticked-off alicorn, it seemed like nothing more than a fool having a temper tantrum. Paper Pusher had a resigned look on his muzzle as he led her into the building and went through all the steps of getting her a visitor's badge. The bigot wasn't even going to let her get the proper ID and had been blocking her from entering the visitor's lounge. Candace then looked at Paper Pusher. Thank you for that. I thought considering I had official business in RGIS still that it wouldn't be an issue. I appreciate your help. You're welcome. At least that I could do after all you've done for us. He paused his stride for a moment before changing directions and gesturing her to follow him. Trotting right along with him, Candace followed. The inside of the RGAS headquarters felt slightly unfamiliar. The wards didn't like her here, even with the issued visitor's badge hanging around her neck. The turns and corridors all seemed like they were in the wrong place, and felt like she was led downstairs where she knew she was going upstairs. The magic that protected the building was clearly designed to stop any pony not meant to be here from finding their way around. I hope things go well for you. Keep being the good guy here at RGIS. Honestly, they would lose half their efficiency if they didn't have you. 
Though, do let me know if you ever feel like you want to join the Night Guard. I can pass on the recommendation to Princess Luna for you. Candace said with a playful smirk. <laughs> if even 10% of the reports on what they go through is accurate, I don't think I would want to be a Night Guard, but thank you for the vote of confidence. He said warily. She gave him a warm smile. Just so you know, Paper, I didn't miss your interest in me. Her voice sounded slightly consoling, but still quite warm. If I had any interest in Stallions, I would have asked you out years ago. Though I do thank you for your professionalism the whole time. Paper Pusher opened his mouth to say something and then stopped. This is the part where I say thank you, isn't it? His expression was a mix of confusion and regret. Yes, if you want to stay professional. If you think of me as an actual friend, then feel free to say what's on your mind. Candace said in what she hoped was an encouraging tone. He paused, and then opened the door to a storeroom, a door that seemed a moment ago to be a staircase leading up. Paper Pusher lit his horn, his aura pulling something from within. It was a single metal box. I do not know what to make of you, he said before contemplating for a moment. You are an interesting mare that achieves things in fascinating ways. Now, I think you might need a little mental help for wanting to join the Night Guard. He lifted the box in his aura and offered it to Candace. I hope you do well and don't regret it. 26% of ponies that are accepted into the Night Guard by Princess Luna do not survive their first week under her. Candace smirked at his unknown innuendo there. <sighs> Sorry, your words brought to my mind a very different mental image than what you intended. Accepting the box, she took a look at it. As she opened the lid, the contents were revealed. It was full of official requests to RGIS, the top one being a demand that she was removed from her position for being an alien from another world. She froze for a fraction of a second as an image of a nightmare creature flashed through her mind. A terrifying black carapist monster with its long bladed tail hovering menacingly above its smooth black head. She caught herself before she visibly reacted and carried on with the conversation. If these are all like this, then this should provide several hours of amusement. Thank you, Paper. She then set the box in her bags and gave him a friendly hug. After a long moment, he returned the embrace clumsily. You'll be missed, and not just by me, he said, patting her on the back. A bit of wry humor crossed her face. I know. I just won't be missed by certain guards and nobility. Fortunately, I don't need to worry about their petty attitudes any longer. And thanks to you, I didn't have to arrest one today. Paper Pusher nodded, leading her to where she needed to be. Oh, you know as well as I do that her family would have gotten her off without even a warning on her official record. Oh, I know. But it still would have been humiliating for her. In more ways than one. Candace said with confidence. After finishing the official transfer of duties with her prior commanding officer, Candace went to the office of her old supervisor and knocked on the door. Candace could feel a simple detection spell reach out from the room. It was revealing light's magic. The door to the office opened. The office was neat and organized, with everything in easy reach of a hoof, clearly set up for its non-unicorn residence. Candace could see both her prior supervisor's steadfast vigil and light inside. It appeared that they were having a meeting. Light's coat was no longer dyed, but now a brilliant white with a stunning silver mane and eyes. She was beautiful, and perfectly presented despite her adventures last night. Steadfast was a pony that would have been considered handsome anywhere other than Canterlot, with a balanced mix of rugged toughness and refined lines. His amber coat was not as well-groomed as it normally was, which would definitely fail inspection. Clearly, the stress of the current situation must have been getting to him. Her supervisor was the only Earth Pony Command rank officer in the RGIS. He had only gotten his chance because the nobles were too busy bickering. They were fighting over which of their candidates should get his post, and RGIS managed to disregard all of them. So, he was the only one left metaphorically standing. Speak of the Draconiquus, Steadfast said, looking to Candos with a hint of regret in his eyes. He motioned her inside, reaching for a set of papers. You were really going through with this? Light asked, her tone edged with mild accusation. After closing the door, she took a seat in front of his desk. Yes, I'm being inducted with my new oath tonight. Feel free to ask any questions, I'm sure you have plenty. Candace replied with genuine pride in her voice. Steadfast let out a long-suffering sigh. More than I'm allowed to ask. Light turned to Steadfast and pointed her hoof at Candace. Exasperation and righteous indignation appeared all over her. Princess Luna threw her into a combat situation all on her own into a warehouse of 50 plus dark magic users. You do not do that with some pony so valuable, we're not gonna let this stand, are we? Candace looked at her with her head slightly cocked. Oh, you care about me? She said in a flattered tone, a smirk on her face. <laughs> More would care about you if you weren't so sarcastic. Light shot back. But seriously, we're gonna miss you here. This is literally the worst time that you could have picked to take a fancy for the night. Well, those that didn't care about me were those that wanted me out of here because I didn't fit their little definition of what constitutes being a pony. She said with a hint of venom in her voice. 
Sorry you didn't deserve that. I just had to deal with one of the guards that wouldn't let me in to finish my job here. Paper Pusher had her sitting in a room somewhere waiting for further instructions or something. But as for my fancy for the night... Light interrupted. I know enough about Wings to know that Princess Luna was not just being friendly or casting a spell. Steadfast continued sorting some paperwork. It seemed like he was simply watching and waiting. It looked like he dared not interrupt what might be turning into an argument between the two mares, both of whom were very adept at combat. Yeah, you got me there. Yes, I have feelings for Princess Luna. Do you think that she would put me in a situation that she didn't have under control if I failed my test? Karen appreciation was evident in her voice. Deliberately sounding calm, Light answered. But in the situation, she was ready to level the whole block at a minimum. You did see Starfall, didn't you? <laughs> More than see, I felt the mass of that thing from several hoof lengths away. But she didn't need to use it. I passed the test. I saved possibly a hundred or so lives. Sixty a minimum. Anger flared on Light's face for a moment before she schooled it into calm professionalism. I'm not saying that you didn't do well. You performed unbelievably well. I'm just saying that the Night Guard takes too many risks. They're too reckless and have little regard for rules, due process, or the lives of the ponies that get in their way. I could have done so much more than just point out leads that others couldn't see if I was allowed on the field. Politics and petty bigotry kept me locked up behind a desk. You saw what I can actually do. Where do you think I should have been? Candace left off with her voice still caring, but with just a hint of frustration showing through. Her wings swung out to offer a hug as an olive branch, if Light wished it. You want... Light started, and Steadfast politely coughed. I think we're getting off topic. Light turned to Steadfast, standing almost at attention, clearly taking his words as a rebuke. Steadfast nodded his head towards Candace, doing his best not to roll his eyes. Taking the hint, Light accepted the offered hug. Please, just... don't get yourself killed. I'll do my best not to. Princess Luna has already hinted at training to help with that as well. Thank you for actually being concerned. So few around here actually are. Candace said with warmth. Light's hug was a bit firmer and a lot warmer than she'd expected. Maybe a friend there that I didn't realize was there. After a few moments longer than normal for just a polite hug, Light seemed to notice where they were and pulled back. Candace then brushed Light's shoulder. As she retracted her wings now, that Light was finished with a hug. At least she has the good friends that count, the ones that really matter. Because all the other ones that are causing her distress, eh, they ain't worth her trouble. Anywho, let's get on to our very unique donators. Top donators, Peter Coltard, J10 Man, Darkseid, Gauntlet, and only one thing. TacoCat598, Zar630, Strix, Raiden, Narwhals, Black Moonheart, Drake Love Dragon, Pastel Skies, Austin Roland, ChrissyKiller557, Stu Hex, Will, James Burner, Dospel, Delta Omega, Jack Cadge, RuneScythe9852, Madman Stan, Leslie Perkett, Hunter Norman, Stephen Bingham, Line God12, and many more fantastic people. Thank you all so much for watching this video and live life to the fullest.